Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Cerebral and this is Cerebral Talks TV and I'm back to talk about a few things that's going on in our world, okay? So let's start off with some news I definitely do not like having to share and that is that Mariah Carey, who I love so much, everyone knows that I love Mariah Carey. To me, she's like the queen of music, legendary Mariah Carey, a dream to see her in, in concert. I'm sad to say that her mother and her sister both passed away recently, but what's crazy about it is that they passed away on the same day. Now, I have to tell you, when I heard this, I said to myself, hold on, this just don't make no sense to me. This doesn't make any sense. Now, I've heard a, pe a few people saying conspiracy theories. Y'all know the Illuminati sacrificing and all that stuff. They've been said, some people have said that online. I don't think that Mariah Carey is into that sort of stuff, even though I don't know her personally. But I did say to myself, it is very, very strange that her sister passed away and her mother the same day. Now, her sister is Allison, and she passed away at 63. Now, her sister did have health problems. It's well known she had some health problems for a while. And her and Mariah didn't always have the best relationship. Uh, she even talked about it in her memoir, her book that she released uh, about last year, I believe. And um, I'm not sure of the relationship with her mother, but at the end of the day, I know she loved them. You know, that's her mother, her sister. There's always some some love there. And her mother and Mariah, Mariah and her mother seem to be so, somewhat close. I think there were a few issues, but they still stayed in contact. And there we know that there was some issues with Mariah Carey and her sister and maybe even her brother. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure that Mariah Carey is, is sad about it. You know, I definitely would be. And I just said to myself, this is just insane to lose both of them the same day. This doesn't happen very often. And it is it is something to hear that. So I hope that Mariah Carey is is healing from this because, you know, you're devastated times too your mother and your sister. So this is this is crazy. I'm going to read to you the statement that Mariah Carey has released. She says that my heart is broken that I've lost my mother this past weekend. Sadly, in a tragic turn of events, my sister lost her life the same day. I feel blessed that I was able to spend the last week with my mom before she passed away. I appreciate everyone's love and support and respect for my privacy during this impossible time okay so from what I did hear I heard that her sister was actually in hospice she was in hospice and she was having issues with her organs breaking down and everything and um, you know she lost her battle with her illness I hope that Mariah Carey and the rest of Mariah Carey's whole family that they are okay and recover from this this loss. The one thing I can say about when people pass away, I think this might sound weird. This might sound weird, but I think that the only hmm, sort of peace you can get is knowing that your time is going to come. You know, like you're not going to suffer on earth forever without them, that your day is going to come. I know we don't always want to rush that to come sometimes, but it's like, you know, what you hope for more than anything is that you'll see them again. The people that you want to see, you know, that you'll be able to see them. That's that's what people hope for. And um, we all have to go, but it's not easy, especially when it's your mother and your, your sister, you know, especially if y'all have a close relationship. So, you know, I wish Mariah the, the well and the best in recovering from this, this loss. All right. Speaking of people passing away. Look, I wasn't going to talk about this when I heard about this, but now it's on the shade room. It's on the Jasmine brand. It's on TikTok, and it's now public. And Craig Mack, Craig Mack is uh, one of the biggest stars from bad boy entertainment. We remember the, who got the new flavor in you? Yeah. You know, Craig Mack and, um, he disappeared for a while and you see Black Rob up here as well, you know, and I have a picture of Puffy because all these people were associated with Puffy. So Craig Mack's family revealed that he actually passed away from AIDS and, um, 
they said it was heart failure to honor his privacy wishes. So of course, a lot of people are saying if he wanted it to be private, what is this? The thing is, is that the Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone magazine published an article where they revealed they had saw the death certificate and they spoke to his family and that he had um, HIV that turned into AIDS. And he joined a group in South Carolina, a church that I believe was against medicine. So he joined the church and he refused to get treatment and he had issues. You get a lot of issues from AIDS, you know, cancers and, and your organs failing, but it was caused from him not taking the medicine. And um, I read the article. I heard about this before a lot of other news outlets published this and I thought about talking about it, but then I decided not to because I wanted to give him respect in a way. Uh, after reading the article and, the, and what's crazy is that when I tried to read the article again, Rolling Stone, I couldn't even read the article. Like I had to pay to, to see it, even though I had read it already. I don't know what happened. So I sort of took it as a sign not to talk about it. Um, I have this picture of Black Rob too, because he was associated with Puffy's label and he passed away maybe uh, last year or two years ago. And he was very sickly, very skeletal. And in my mind, I thought, I wonder, did he have it too? I don't know if he did. I'm not saying he did, but um, it's, anything is possible. And Puff Daddy, I mean, Kim passed away of pneumonia. And we know people who tend to have AIDS have pneumonia. I'm not saying that Kim Porter had it because they say that she was, um, well, something was slipped into something to get rid of her, allegedly. I saw the Sloan Bella video. But um, we never know what celebrities, there are a lot of celebrities who have passed away from AIDS and it's just covered up. You don't hear about it. They call it other stuff. You know, um, there are a few that I think passed away from it, but it's never been officially confirmed. We know that Charlie Sheen has HIV and he's been public about it. And he said, I know a lot of other um, Hollywood actors who have it, but I'm not going to tell you who they are. You know, it's a very sensitive thing thing and Craig Mack didn't want people to know about it but unfortunately it's been made public and um you know one thing the the reason why I am actually touching on this is because I've been reading comments from black people and from what I have seen from black people in the comment section many of them are very angry they're angry that the world knows he died of it but it also reveals to me that black people have a huge amount of shame when it comes to HIV and AIDS. Black people do not want people to know black celebrities who have it, who've caught it, or who've died from it. And it's not, and look, I believe in privacy. Like, first of all, it can happen to any one of us. No one is exempt from getting it, okay? And some people don't want everybody to know. For a lot of reasons, that's private, also, a lot of people do tend to shame you a little more. You know, like if it had came out that Craig Mack had cancer, nobody would throw a fit about it. But because it's revealed he had AIDS, they're like, oh, how could you reveal it? Oh, this, well, don't nobody need to know? Because a lot of black people are embarrassed and are ashamed of AIDS. Yes, I'm saying it. Y'all are. Y'all are. Because when other diseases are made public that people die from, y'all don't throw fits about it. But the minute somebody, um, you know, you find out they have AIDS and they die from it, then y'all y'all want to cover it up because y'all don't want the truth. A lot of black people, y'all want to live in la la land. Y'all want to pretend this thing ain't real. Oh my goodness, you know, the last rapper you heard about who had it was Easy e and that was decades ago, okay? And then people start questioning, well, how did you get it? Look, when you are in the entertainment industry, look, people might assume maybe he was with a man, but he could have... Um, he could have been getting high on heroin. You know, people use needles and all types of stuff. People sleep with women, trannies and all that within the industry. Nobody knows at the end of the day. Nobody knows. But I'm going to tell you something that I read in that article as to why I didn't break this story as soon as I heard it. I actually heard about it from Walter Lee Hampton. And then I saw it a few days before the other uh, social media, uh, top social media uh, creators got a hold of it on like Shade Room and stuff. 
The reason why I didn't touch on it or talk about it is because in the article, when he went to that church, he did the interview and the person who did the interview said that Craig Mack definitely looks sick and much older. His family talked about it after he had passed away. But during the interview when he was alive, he was with Craig Mack. And you know what Craig Mack said to him? I'm almost tearing up. I'm not an extreme religious person, but it touched my soul. Craig Mack said to the man doing the interview, he said, whatever you tell people, you make sure you tell them that I believed in God or that I was, I, I, um, I think that's what it was, what he said. I was about to say, did he say I fought for God? Something like that. But it was like, even though I don't even know him, it was like I could feel him through the, through the article. I know that sounds crazy to say, but when he said it, it's almost like something is telling me he knew it could get out. And he told him in, in a way, he basically said, whatever the public hears, you make sure you tell them that I believed in God because before his last days, he went to the church. This is years before he passed away. He went to the church. This man left everything, his reputation, who he was, and went to the church. And that tells you something. Now, here's the thing. Maybe he was involved in things in a certain lifestyle because he was famous. This happens to so many people, men with power and money, even regular everyday men. And when he went to the church, my, I'm just wondering why didn't he take his medicine? Did he want to pass away or did he go to the church? Because did he think if he joined that church that it would save him if he just believed enough in God that he would be cured? Because stuff like that happens. Did he want to pass away? But before he passed away, he wanted to be right with God. Is that what it was? Nobody knows, but he did leave and he went to that church and, um, you know, I don't know how I feel about a church that believes in not taking your medicine when you were ill. You know, a lot of people do stuff like that and they end up passing away. You know, that was his choice at the end of the day. And there's a lot of stigma when you get this. And that's why so many people don't want it to be public. People always assume that because you catch it, that you must have been a hoe. That's not true at all. Do you know how many married black women have AIDS, a died of it from their husbands? Do you know how many black women who are in committed relationships with their boyfriend have HIV because he stepped out, sleeping with men a lot of times and with other women and, and these trans? This happens all the time. I'll hear people say, well, I'll be celibate. Yeah, you're not gonna be celibate forever if you get a man. Eventually you're gonna do it. And all it takes is for him to step out or for you to step out and something can happen. You know, I'm just saying, and I'm not saying that being celibate doesn't help prevent things. Of course it does, but no one is exempt or 100% safe because partners, husbands do cheat. I hope you know that. So speaking of AIDS, uh, it was all over the internet about what happened. Okay. in South Carolina, actually South Carolina in South Carolina, 15,000 people have tested positive for HIV recently and everyone's in shock. I'm not in shock because South Carolina has always been a top state for that for decades. It's like black people have been living under a rock about the statistics. And now these are just the people who got tested. A lot of people, especially men, do not get tested. You know, when they hear about women, they throw a fit. Who do you think women are getting it from? Who they're sleeping with? So, okay, so 15,000. Now, okay, it says Southern states experience the greatest burden of infection and, and passing away. Um, the Southern states, the Bible states, right, are 37% uh, of the country's population but the states account for more than half of all new HIV diagnosis, 52%, and people passing away from it at 49% among persons diagnosed with HIV. Furthermore, the five U.S. cities with the highest rates of the new HIV diagnosis is Florida, Miami, Florida, Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans, 
um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, LA, Atlanta, Georgia, very high black populations. And that's something that we don't want to talk about. A lot of these states, let me show the map real quick. Okay. All right. This is the map that shows the highest HIV and AIDS rates. The red, the dark red is the highest. Look at what you see all throughout the South and the Northeast too. Okay, now look, Florida got a lot of black and Hispanic people. Okay, the South, look, a lot of different races are in the South, but the bulk of black people are in the South. And this is something that what is going on with black people? That's the question that we can't dare ask. What is it about you versus other people as to why you getting this the most? And I'm not, look, like I said, anybody could get it. And a lot of other races do have it, but the statistics, you can talk about music, baby, everybody listening to rap music. Everybody is effing. Black people are not the only race having SEX. Everybody up in here is having SEX at large. Okay. But are they having SCX with protection? What's going on? What's going on here? Okay, so you have the South. Oh, you got to talk about it, all right? We have to. It, it is a real thing that we don't often want to talk about enough, even though the statistics keep coming out. And it is scary. It is scary. It is. You know, a lot of people make mistakes you know, with partners you have and stuff like that. But this is a real thing. And when you see these stats coming out, it reminds you that, you know what, this is real. This is real. And it is scary. So it says that black Americans make up 13% of the population, but 42% of the people with HIV in 2016. And it's still the case right now. 44% of all new infections in 2017. Okay. Also, these are the statistics with women. It says that 85% of women get it from having SCX with men. Okay. And all right. It shows the age ranges, the highest amount versus the lowest amount in age, but 85% get it from sleeping with a man. But it says here that 67% of men get it from sleeping with men. That means that the women are sleeping with the men, but the men are sleeping with men, but sleeping with women too, which is why women have it at 85% with sleeping with men, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that black people, y'all going y'all going to be mad at me for saying this, but this is from my observation. Black people and society as a whole, y'all prefer gay men to marry women. I see it because every time a gay man, especially black, is open that he does not like vagina, he does not want a vagina, you shame him. You tell him to get off the internet. You tell him to be quiet. You want him to disappear. You want him to pretend. You'll tell him repent, AKA you want him pre to pretend he doesn't like men. And you think prayer is gonna pray away the gay, which has never happened for majority. Get in a relationship with one of your daughters. I got a news flash for you. Black men cheat on black women like crazy. They can't keep it in their pants with heterosexual SEX. So you really think a man struggling with his sexuality who likes men or sleeps with men, you think he's not going to go out there busting it wide with a bunch of men the same way he does with women? He has a penis. Y'all are putting your daughters in danger. I'm not saying that I want to see men tongue kissing and, you know, the saucy Santanas and all that stuff all the time, but something got to give here. Because y'all tell the gay and black men, go somewhere, you need to repent. I don't want to see this. Then they get with your daughters and they can't fight being gay. And they go out there and get a man sleeping with men 
and then they bringing it back to the black women. Society prefers down low culture. Y'all can try to sweep it up and try to clean it up. Oh, well, we just don't want them to be gay. You don't have to want them to be gay, but guess what? Gay men have been here since the biblical times. They're not going anywhere. So do you want them to be open and stay with the men and stop sleeping and marrying your daughters as gay men? Or do you want to keep it in the closet and you don't want to see them, but they exist by the millions, the gay and bisexual men, more than what you can possibly imagine. And it's scary, but it's very real. And that's just how I feel about it. That, that's my opinion from what I see online, how society reacts to openly gay men. Y'all prefer closeted men and y'all going to have to come to terms or admit that or something. I, I'm not going to go more into detail about it. I just, I, I will not in this video, but this is a real thing. It's definitely real and it can happen to anyone. No one is exempt from getting anything, period. Not even your favorite celebrities. And a lot of your celebrities have it now, but they're quiet about it. And they make music telling, telling you to just go bust it wide every single way and all this stuff. And, you know, but they don't tell you, they don't tell you about the video vixens who were in the industry who disappeared because they might have caught it. They don't tell you about the actors and singers who had to go on the casting couch with often gay and bisexual men in power who ended up catching it from them and their lives ruin. They don't tell you a number of them about what all that stuff that goes on. And I think the reactions I saw from black people about Craig Mack, it was just very painfully obvious that black people are deeply ashamed about their favorite celebrities, all people finding out they have it. They, they, they don't, I saw just, I just, if it was cancer, it would be a different reaction. Instead, all they kept going on about why people got to know why, 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 what, what does it matter now? Y'all all going to die from something now because he wanted it to be private. Okay. I understand that part, but Rolling Stone found the certificate and the family talked about it. So now it's out in the open and, you know, people's privacy should be respect, respected when it comes to that. But I read a lot more into the, I saw a lot more with the comments that it's just obvious to me that black people have a really big problem uh, with discussing it or pretending it doesn't exist. And I think the shame comes because people, if you get cancer, people can deal with that. But if they find out you have that, it's because they think, oh, well, you got it from SEX. And because SEX is seen as dirty to some people or such a sensitive thing, especially if you're religious, then people start feeling like, oh, well, maybe you deserved it or see you was promiscuous. Oh, you this and that. And that's where the shame comes from, even though plenty of people are not promiscuous who caught it. Plenty of people were in committed relationships who caught it. Plenty of wives have caught it. Preachers have given it to their wives. So it's time to grow up when it comes to this issue and uh, also being honest about the statistics and things like that. So rest in peace to Craig Mack. And I definitely hope he's okay and he's at peace. And what he said in that article definitely touched me. He's not the only one, but I know it shocked a lot of people. Let's go to the next topic. Miss Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles. She got divorced from legendary, a legendary actor. I can't remember his name right now, but his daughter is also, I think, uh, Denise or Bianca Lawson. She's a popular actress, very beautiful. And she had to pay him $300,000. Yes. Now we've heard about women having to pay their men a lot more. You know, Mary J. Blige, I think Sherry Shepard, Holly Berry, Kelly Clarkson, a few more. I think Adele might have even had to pay her ex-husband. I'm not 100% sure. But she had to pay him $300,000. Now, for a lot of people, I'm sure you're saying that is a lot of money. But Tina knows got money. That's not really much for her, but that's still that's still not a a little bit of money though. Three hundred thousand. Okay, it says it's official. Tina Knowles and her Hollywood husband, Richard Lawson, have finalized the divorce. The pair were married in 2015 after two years of courtship. Last summer, she filed the papers, taking the first documented steps toward the dissolution of their marriage. It says that... Um, 
Okay, 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 hold on, hold on. It says that on Thursday, uh, details of the split became public. According to the documents, it says that, you know, it was irreconcilable differences between them that led to the breakdown of the marriage, making it impossible for them to live together as husband and wife. Damn, okay. It says that moreover, terms of the settlement reveal that neither party will get spousal support, but Tina Knowles uh, will give him a one-time payment of $300,000 for assets. Uh, she got uh, the 2018 Tesla, a 2020 Bentley, and uh, a book partnership with uh, the Penguin Random House, a 1% entrance in Kirby Beauty Management LLC, furniture and art in her possession and all the creative works, ideas, drafts, and materials that she generated through, uh, during their marriage. It says that Lawson was awarded a 2001 Cadillac Escalade. Okay. Her ex-husband, various bank and retirement accounts, all money owed to him, uh, to Richard Lawson studios, earn royalties and his creative works that manifested during the marriage. We wish the pair well as they close one chapter and prepare for the next steps of the journey ahead. Now, Tina, look, maybe, look, Tina's not broke now. She's not, she's Beyonce's mother. And during the time, during, you know, when she was in Destiny's Child, Tina was the one designing all their outfits. So not only did she get paid probably as their manager, I know her father, Beyonce's father was the manager and got paid. But Tina also, I think, might have been a man manager. I know she was designing their outfits and more than likely she got her cut, her pay from, from being their designer. So besides that, she is Beyonce's mother. Let's just be honest. Okay, she's her mother. She she has, she's paid. So, so Tina is going to be fine. Even if, look, Beyonce can easily handle it. Like, mom, I got you. Here, take the 300,000, pay the man, let's move on. Okay, so these things happen and we've been seeing it a lot more of women paying men hefty amounts of money during uh, their divorce. Speaking of divorce, we talked about Holly Berry before. Someone had the nerve to ask, why is she like this? Frustrated fans call out Holly Berry, her bad choice in men, as the actress heads to court to fight for sole custody of her son. You know, people sometimes look, I don't know Holly Berry personally, but a lot of women meet men who aren't no good. A lot of y'all listening to me have met several men who weren't no damn good. A lot of men are not any damn good. Some of them are, but it's extremely difficult to meet a man you are really compatible with. I'm saying it from my experience and a lot of you listening to me a lot of women are not even married because y'all have a hard time finding a, a man that's good for you, that's compatible with you. And, you know, they think Holly Berry, something must be wrong with Holly. Holly's beautiful. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean you, you always going to get quality men. You know, did it ever occur to some people that a lot of men are no damn good out here? But when people say it, they try to say, make up stuff. Oh no, you hurt. No experience. It, a lot of people. It's hard to find a compatible man. It just is. Holly Berry got married. She got wifed up twice, right? So I don't know what goes on in her relationships. I don't know if, I don't know her personally, but I find it weird that people always want to blame her just because she doesn't always have the best luck with meeting a good man. But that's the case for over 50% of women in the entire world. So um, let's get a little bit more into this. Okay, it says Holly Berry has been crazy in love with her man Van Hunt for almost four years. While her current love life seems to be effortless bliss, the boomerang star can't seem to shake the drama from her past relationships. Her name was, you know, in the headlines August 18th for filing court documents to obtain sole custody for her son, Maceo, in a custody battle with her ex, Oliver Martinez. It says that Holly Berry faces criticism for her choice in men amid a recent custody fight over her son. Okay, she challenged his parenting skills, co-parenting skills, claiming that the SWAT actor refuses to co-parent or communicate in a child-centered way. 
Barry cites that Martinez's lack of effort has caused a concerning decline in her 10 year old's um, his behavior in education. People Magazine obtained the document, documents that state, because of respondent's opposition to any interventions whatsoever for years and because of respondent prioritizing soccer activities over Maceo's educational and psychological well-being, his education and his behavior has worsened. Okay, so the father is not really giving him enough attention, basically, is what they're saying. It says the mother of two specified in detail how disruptive Oliver Martinez has been with getting Maceo the help he needs. She says that Martinez allegedly allegedly ignores the professionals hired to help her son and he aggressively stands in the way of implementing strategies okay to assist after being declared a uh, single in 2016 Holly Berry and Oliver Martinez agreed last year that it would be best to have joint and legal and physical custody of Maceo. But now the Catwoman star believes that the arrangement um, in which each parent has him for half the week is not suitable for their child's growth. She even stated that when she spends long periods of time at her father at his father's house, Maceo would act out as a solution Holly Berry is asking for sole custody, okay, all right, to make all decisions, despite what seems to be good parental intentions on Berry's behalf. Her scrutinizers seem to believe this is a, a consistent problem for her. One person said she has the same problem with every guy she dates, I think is her, while someone else expressed the same sentiment saying, I'm definitely not buying this analogy. Her history speaks for herself. Shut the hell up. Half of you damn women always talking crap. Don't even got a damn good man. I noticed that with a lot of women. Women are always criticizing women, but yeah, you ain't even meet no good man. Or you haven't even dated that much. So you think because you don't have experience with men that somehow you're so good at picking men. Go date 10 of them and then get back to me. I'm just saying. I'm just making a point. A lot of women, you got women who don't even have a man. They barely even date. But yet they think they have the answers and no men or that they're good. And yet you, you don't even have a man. And when you have a man, it don't work out. So what's wrong with you? Can you keep a man? You know, and I'm not trying to say this to 100% protect Holly Berry because she might be crazy. I don't know her, but I just find it interesting. I find it so interesting when women like 50% of y'all on the planet don't got no good man. Y'all suffering worldwide with the men you got. Damn near over 70% of y'all been cheated on on every man you ever talked to. But yet y'all always want to front and pretend like you don't understand the problems women have with men. Get out of my face with that crap. I'm just saying. Okay. A third person says, why is she like this? First, she fights with her first baby daddy. Yeah, because he turned out to be no good for custody. And now her son. Yeah, the first baby daddy turned out to be a gold digger. So, um, yeah, she fought for custody of her child. Okay. And plus she's her, it's her daughter. Okay. So now you realize who's the problem. It's amazing. People are amazing to me. A third said, why is she like this? Okay. Okay. And it says, this isn't Holly Berry's first custody battle rodeo previous to dealing with the issues with Martinez, where she was ordered to pay child support of $8,000 to the first baby daddy. Bear, um, Barry was in a legal dispute with her ex-husband, Gabrielle Aubrey. Okay, not baby daddy, her ex-husband, excuse me. The two share a 16-year-old daughter, Nyla, and they went to court uh, over her in 2012. Okay, because Aubrey uh, made significant, he made less money than her. She was ordered to pay him 16000 a month in child support. But in 2021, yeah, of course he wanted the baby because if he keep the baby for 18 years, she got to keep paying his behind. She managed to get her fees cut in half to only $8,000 a month. Uh, in addition to 4.3% of any annual addition income, she made over 1.9 million, 90, basically $1.9 million. Okay. Fast forward two years later, uh, Holly Berry's winning streak continued okay she was ordered to pay an annual child support payment uh, that was capped at one hundred and ten thousand dollars 
As for her son, Maciel, during the finalization of their divorce last year, it was determined that Holly Berry would pay $8,000 a month to Oliver Martinez. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. So let me say something. I already said what I had to say. I'm tired of people. People just want to have a field day on Holly Berry because number one, y'all love to see beautiful women suffer. Okay. Especially if, if, you know, if we have issues in the relationship department, you want to uh, start blaming women. And then you have the black men who once love Holly Berry. They are loving seeing her get dragged by these non-black men for this child support. But I have to remind you, Holly Berry also dated black men. Um, Wesley Snipes. Yeah. And Wesley Snipes allegedly beat her so bad in her, her ear. She can't even hear in one of her ears because of Wesley Snipes, who also said he prefers Asian women over a decade ago and couldn't stand black women, even though black women made his career, but his career ain't really been the same since. Then you got Eric Benet who went on Oprah admitting that he was an SEX addict and was creeping on Holly all over the place with multiple women, maybe even unprotected all over the damn place. So nobody can say nothing about Holly as far as being with white and Hispanic men. And she's also half white, you know, so who cares as far as if she can date a white man and she's half white, even if she wasn't half white, she still could. I'm just making a point. That woman has dated black men. So save it. Cause I know it's coming in the comments and they dogged her butt out too. Okay. So is it, it's just so hard for society to believe that a lot of women have a hard time meeting compatible men. I already said the average woman settles on average and a lot of women are suffering in their relationships and marriages. Holly Berry is just famous and you're seeing it. I'm just saying. So, um, you know, it's easier for men to settle more than women a lot. And I've already told you why, because they benefit more in the bedroom than a woman. So they settle a little bit more easier where <laughs> I'm even going to get into that. So I just wish Holly Berry well. Maybe she might not get married anymore from this happening to her. I, you know, she just you got to be careful. And, and nowadays the court is giving these men this money. You got these men gold diggers out here targeting women. Now, Oliver was an actor himself, but. Um, he's not as famous to me as Holly Berry, but I have seen him in a few films. So, um, I wish her well and her children well. Let's go to the next topic. This is actually the last topic for today. And it's some good news. Wendy Williams, the legendary Wendy Williams was actually spotted out in public and she was looking better. She was seen with her son and actually the son of Dr. Sabi, the legendary Dr. Sabi. And she was smiling. She was shopping. She looked better. She looked like she put on a little bit of weight, which is good. So let's get into this story. Okay, it says that she looks healthier. It says that Wendy Williams has made a shocking comeback in public uh, with her public appearance with Dr. Sabi's son after not being seen in about a year. It says that after months of reports that Wendy Williams' whereabouts were un unknown to her family, the former talk show host has finally been spotted in, in person in public. It says that in February, Wanda Williams, her sister, and her niece, Alex Finney, shared that Wendy was being held at an undisclosed treatment facility where they were not privy to her whereabouts. It says, I speak with her when she reaches out to me. She is, from what I understand, in a wellness healing type of environment, Wanda told people at the time. We can't reach out to her, but she can reach out to us, and she's in a healing place emotionally. It says that um, since then, there have been no signs of Wendy in public. On August 19th, Victor Brownman Jr., the son of the late Dr. Sabi, took to Facebook to share that Wendy and her son, Kevin Hunter Jr., had stopped by his store in New Jersey to shop for his herbal products. Brownman shared a photograph alongside Wendy, who was diagnosed with dementia and aph aphasia with the caption, Wendy Williams came to my store. She came to my store. I lo much love Queen. Okay. It says that um, she attends the Ked Centennial Celebration Center. Okay. 
This appearance was the first time in months that the former talk show host was spotted in public. Her absence sparked concerns about her well-being, especially following the February 2024 premiere of the Lifetime documentary, Where's Wendy Williams? It says that the former New York radio personality has not been seen since May of 2023, aside from her appearances in the documentary, which was filmed in August and August and April 20. Uh, 2023. It says that um, close friends and family have expressed worries that her court appointed guardianship is isolating her from her loved ones, a sentiment echoed through the documentary. Thus, the visit to Brownman's store, especially with uh, her being with her son, who recently turned 24, it shows a new chapter for Williams and her family. The visit went viral and the neighborhood talk sharing photos of Wendy Williams and her son, prompting fans to express relief at seeing her in good spirits. Okay, that's so good. It says that it went viral again. We're praying she's doing better. She's happy with her son. One fan said, Wendy looks healthy. She's not skinny anymore. She put the weight back on. I'm happy to see her doing better. Another person says she looks better. Wendy doesn't do hugs, so she must be really in a happy mood. I hope so. I miss her coming across the TV talking ish. All right. It says that in her prime, okay, someone said t- in 2024, um, I would hate to see Wendy in her prime coming, child. Now, okay, I'm glad she went to a natural herbalist for help. Okay, they said that I'm glad she went to a natural herbalist for help. I hope she got from that white lady that was stealing and controlling her assets. Okay, she looks healthier. I miss Wendy. Okay, however, some remain cautious, pointing out the gravity of her condition. She has dementia, so that's not any better. So if you want to see her and everything, if they choose to bring her back, you know, you can't lie about the diagnosis and everything that's going on with her. Dementia is usually something you prepare to start saying goodbye to permanently. Oh my goodness. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, says that dementia, the kind that she has, often leads to personality um, behavior changes due to the affected brain regions. People with this condition may embarrass themselves or behave inappropriately. It also says the condition is irreversible, even though there are some tools that can help with their quality of life. Dr. Sabi during his lifetime claimed that he had treatments, you know, they said he cured a lot of things, that he had treatments for dementia through an alkaline diet, herbs, juices, and other natural remedies. It says that Williams, excuse me, it says Williams is among many who have turned to Dr. Sabi's methods in pursuit for better health. Although Dr. Sabi's treatment attracted high profile clients like Lisa Left Eye Lopez and Michael Jackson, his claims were met with skepticism and medical professionals and regulatory authorities. In 1988, Dr. Sabi faced legal action from the New York Attorney General for making, you know, claims that he was curing all these people and stuff, but he continued to work until he passed away in 2016. Okay, it says that his son, Bauman continues to promote his father's teachings uh, through Dr. Sabi's cell food company, offering herbal products and alternative health solutions. Fans of Wendy Williams are hopeful that these methods will help her regain her health and return to the public eye. Okay, so I hope to see Wendy Williams recover. I hate to see what happened to her. Seriously, the videos we saw from that docu-series and how quickly you know, how rapidly the dementia was going on. A lot of people are not used to seeing something like that. And dementia is serious. I mean, a lot of people pass away because you forget to eat. You forget a lot of stuff. Some people walk out of their house in the middle of wintertime and freeze outside. You have to be watched 24 seven just to be able to eat properly. And I absolutely hate this. I hate this. And I know a lot of people might pray for a miracle to help her and other people that they know personally. Wendy Williams is a legend and she will always be a legend. 
and um, I hope that everything gets better for her. That is it for the news stories for today. I will be reading your comments below. I thank you for stopping on by to my channel to check out these stories and I definitely want to hear and read your opinion about all of this. So thank you so much again. Please get those likes up. Please hit the bell if you decide to subscribe and as always click all notifications so you know when I'm live and when I upload. I thank you so much for joining me. You all enjoy your day. Bye everybody.